There's no denying it. Video game development is really damn hard. Making even a halfway decent AAA game requires a Herculean heft of collaboration between hundreds of talented artists and programmers, while a great game takes something else altogether. So it's little surprise that most games are pretty uneven and tout their fair share of flaws, but sometimes developers do end up making so many off-base decisions that they basically get every major thing about their game totally wrong. With that in mind then, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games that got everything wrong. Number 10, Babylon's Fall. How bad could an action RPG from Platinum Games really be? Well, the answer is pretty bad. Babylon's Fall was released back in March with a suspicious lack of fanfare. After a marketing campaign which failed to suggest the game would be anything more than a generic, soulless, visually unappealing entry into the genre. And sadly, that's precisely what Babylon's Fall is, an always online live service game that feels like a parody of itself, so lacking in personality that it is. It doesn't look good, the combat isn't fun or intuitive, and even as a co-op experience, it doesn't really work, given that the Steamer player count fell to just one player within two months of its release. It feels less like a typical full-effort Platinum Games title than something rushed to market at the behest of publisher Square Enix, in a ham-fisted attempt to cash in on the live service boom. Needless to say then, Babylon's Fall falls in every way that a game of this type can, and is far from the enduring project that it was intended to be. Number 9. Fast and Furious Crossroads Though video games adapted from movies don't have a great track record, you do have to wonder just how difficult it really must be to make a halfway decent game based on a film franchise that has itself become increasingly video gamey over the years. The problem, as ever, is that acquiring the license to adapt a hit movie IP is costly enough that it often doesn't leave all that much moolah for active development, as is so painfully the case with 2020's Fast and Furious Crossroads. You'd never ever guessed that something so unpolished came from Slightly Mad Studios, the dev team behind the great Project Cars franchise, and yet Crossroads falls flat as even dumb, undemanding fun. Even if you can forgive the utterly lackluster excuse for a story, unenthusiastic performances from Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, and Tyrese Gibson, and the dated visuals, Crossroads' driving just doesn't feel good. Combine the unresponsive controls with a single fixed camera and a four-hour campaign that you won't remember within days of finishing, and it's an absolute disgrace that this wasn't a budget title. Number 8. The Quiet Man Square Enix strikes again with one of the most baffling video games of the last decade, The Quiet Man. This low-key beat-em-up certainly did have a lot of potential with its intriguing hook that the protagonist is a deaf man and the game lacks sound or subtitles in an attempt to put players in his shoes. Ultimately though, The Quiet Man was quietly shoveled onto storefronts in 2018 and met with near universal scorn for its failure to get basically anything right. For starters, the combat was clunky and awkward, unaided by a wretched camera, and the lack of sound ultimately made the story's presentation feel more frustratingly nonsensical than intriguingly mysterious. A post-launch update did allow players to replay the game with sound, yet considering that you had to beat the game once to even do that, who really had the motivation to play through such a miserable experience twice? There is such a gulf between the developer's intent here and the actual end product that the company Comparisons made to Tommy Wiseau's The Room aren't in any way exaggerated. As both a meaningful work of deaf representation and a basic meat and potatoes action game, The Quiet Man stinks. Number 7, Umbrella Corps. And you thought Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City was bad. 2016's competitive multiplayer shooter Umbrella Corps is a thoroughly tossed off entry into the Resident Evil franchise, enough so that its title bizarrely doesn't even contain the series' moniker. In every fiber of its being, this so-called tactical shooter feels so low budget and low effort, as though Capcom tasked a small team with slapping it together during some downtime in the later stages of Resident Evil 7's development. The graphics look cheap, the gunplay doesn't feel good, the camera is terrible, and the maps are too damn cramped. After a point, you kind of have to wonder who Capcom even made this for, because it's tough to imagine any type of Resident Evil fan, either those who prefer survival 
horror or those who embrace gonzo action, prizing much enjoyment from this. Unsurprisingly, the player count on Steam fell off a cliff within weeks of release and then never recovered. Number six, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 wasn't merely a terrible game, it was a legitimately sad, pathetic thing to behold. The legendary skating franchise had been on the skids for quite some time leading up to Pro Skater 5's release, which Activision touted as a return to form. Fans were of course skeptical going by the pre-release gameplay footage, yet nobody could have anticipated just how much of a broken janky mess the final release would actually be. First and foremost, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 is a shockingly ugly game for a 2015 release. The graphics could easily pass for an early PS3 title and that's being generous, and yet that's far from the worst of the game since. On a pure gameplay level, the skating just doesn't feel slick and fluid like it does in even the lesser Tony Hawk's games. Combined with a plethora of bugs, uninspired level, and a weird lack of NPCs, the once great series now felt like an emaciated, hollowed out shell of its former self. It was just clear that Activision had lead developer Robomodo curl this thing out on a small budget with limited time, and the studio ultimately ended up paying for it, going out of business less than a year after Pro Skater 5's release. The franchise at least enjoyed quite the turnaround in 2020, with remastered project Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 receiving rave reviews and largely restoring fans' faith in the flagging IP. Number 5, eFootball 2022. In 2020, Konami's Pro Evolution Soccer Series was rebranded to eFootball, and last September, its inaugural free-to-play entry, eFootball 2022, was released. And the game was immediately panned into the ground by critics and players alike for its underwhelming visuals, hilarious abundance of bugs, eyesore-inducing user interface, and worst of all, that it didn't even function as a basically enjoyable football game. And this is without getting into the fact that the initial release was extremely bad bones, all the while Konami continued to push a premium paid content, much to fans' chagrin. It was painful to see the successor to Pez, often held up as superior to FIFA in the gameplay stakes, suffer such an embarrassing tumble from grace. Even with the release of the 1.0 patch this April, major AI and matchmaking problems still persist, ensuring that the player base has largely rejected eFootball as a worthy inheritor of Pez's crown. When a game can't even get the basic thrill of football on lock, something the genre has been doing well for literally decades, you know it's a bust. Consequently, expectations couldn't be lower for the imminent 2023 update. Number 4, Mighty Number 9. Mighty Number no. 9 is perhaps the cautionary tale for crowd-funded games, because while the prospect of a spiritual successor to Mega Man created with the help of a legendary Mega Man artist Keiji Inafuni seemed like a can't-lose project, the outcome was so tragically different. Excitement was initially high when Mighty Number no. 9 scored over $4 million in Kickstarter funding, with concept art convincing most everyone that it would indeed be a worthy follow-up to Mega Man. But after numerous delays, it was finally released in June 2016, where fans learned the ugly truth of where their hard-earned cash actually went. Not far, apparently, as the detailed promised art style was replaced with something more cartoonish and less robust, performance on consoles was unacceptably rough, and even the core game design felt like a lackluster cast-off from the franchise that inspired it. All in all, it was a shell of a game that proved what can happen when even slam dunk projects are mismanaged. It didn't help either that the game's marketing ill-advisedly mocked anime fans, as in probably a lot of the people interested in the game in the first place, and many Kickstarter backers received broken codes or incomplete rewards. Number 3, Left Alive. Square Enix's stealth action game Left Alive was initially hyped primarily on the involvement of Metal Gear Solid concept artist Yoji Shinkawa, who would be contributing his designs to a game that, focused on stealth and large mechs, didn't seem a million miles away from Hideo Kojima's own franchise. But Left Alive was rightly ripped apart by the game's press for the fact that it fundamentally wasn't enjoyable as a stealth game, or really anything at all. The overpowering issue was the savagely unforgiving stealth mechanics, where whereby even the lowest difficulty offered a hellacious level of challenge, made worse by a terribly infrequent checkpointing system. Combined with stiff controls and a nothing story, Left Alive was an absolute chore to play. 
Enough that even Shinkawa's solid artwork couldn't save it on the most basic superficial level. Though the developers did release a patch shortly after release that introduced a new casual difficulty setting, by this point the damage was basically done. Yet, even with this more forgiving mode of play in mind, Left Alive was still a soulless waste of time. Number 2, Saints Row 2022. Oh, Saints Row, how we all wanted you to be good. Though it was clear to anyone paying attention that Volition's reboot of the hit sandbox action franchise was basically being sent out to die with a minimal marketing push, everyone still hoped against hope that it might be a pleasant surprise. Yet, critics awarded Saints Row 2022 extremely tepid reviews, suggesting that it didn't even really cut the mustard as a generic open-world action game. Many, including our own, noted Saints Row's lackluster combat, which feels markedly worse than in previous games in the series, and a presentation which awkwardly attempted to split the difference between the more serious earlier games and cartoonish recent ones. Through in a bevy of cringeworthy dialogue, some shockingly dated visuals, and a general feeling of listless and you have an experience that feels like it was churned out for cynical reasons rather than because anyone actually had an inspired idea for a new take on Saints Row. Amid these scathing reviews, Embracer Group stock took a hit, indicating just how little confidence there is in both the game and the future of the brand moving forward. Number 1. Warcraft 3 Reforged Blizzard can't get much right these days, but they've rarely gotten things more wrong than with Warcraft 3 Reforged. A retooling of the beloved RTS, this remake should have just been an easy win for Blizzard. People already loved the game, and all the studio had to do was deliver on the graphical improvements promised in the original trailers, tighten up the gameplay, and release it to an adoring crowd. Instead, the company went full sideshow bob and stood on every possible rake they could in the run-up to launch. First, those teased graphics and improved cinematics were nowhere to be seen in the finished product, bugs plagued the title, and classic features were even omitted for seemingly no reason. The biggest issue, however, was that this new version actually replaced the client for the original Warcraft 3, so you couldn't even just stick with the game you actually liked. It was the reforged edition like it'll lump it. And lump it, fans did, hitting the game with a damning Metacritic score and a huge amount of backlash. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What did you think about these game releases? And are there any others that just went tits up that I missed off here? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.